The moment the news broke that Maxwell Chikumbutso's RF power generator had officially passed a United Nations inspection, the entire tech world seemed to freeze as if humanity had just stepped into a new era. People across the globe were stunned because this was the first time an independent global body had ever evaluated one of Maxwell's devices under controlled conditions and declared it operational. For decades the idea of generating power from radio frequencies without any fossil fuel, solar arrays, wind turbines, or external energy sources sounded like something pulled from exotic science fiction. But suddenly a UN seal, a verified test, and an international report changed the conversation from impossible to we need to talk about this. According to insiders who claimed to be part of the inspection team, the UN engineers were expecting a clever trick or a misdirection, yet they reportedly found a system running continuously without any visible external power feed. They observed the generator energizing a cluster of test loads for hours, while temperature readings, signal scans, and electromagnetic field checks all showed nothing abnormal except for spikes that the team could not immediately classify. One of the experts allegedly remarked that the signature looked like a controlled RF resonance loop, something theoretically feasible but never before demonstrated at this scale. Maxwell, standing quietly during much of the inspection, only spoke when asked why he built the device in the first place. He reportedly said that he wanted to create something that could power hospitals, schools, and villages where conventional infrastructure either failed or never existed. This comment alone shifted the testing environment from skepticism to curiosity, as the inspectors realized the potential humanitarian impact if the technology proved stable. The inspection process was carried out across multiple phases, including stress tests designed to push the generator beyond what Maxwell predicted. During one of these phases, the generator allegedly maintained its output even after the RF environment was disrupted using calibrated interference pulses. This was significant because such interference normally destabilizes RF-based equipment, yet the generator adjusted its internal loop automatically as if it had some form of adaptive logic built into its architecture. The UN team also brought in energy auditors who monitored the output across capacitive loads, resistive loads, and mixed configurations to ensure there was no hidden feed line or buried energy reservoir. By the end of the final round, the auditors reported that they could not identify any traditional energy source powering the system. They noted that the device maintained stable voltage levels far longer than any test battery or capacitor could under similar conditions. This resulted in a preliminary conclusion stating that the generator appeared to operate on an RF recapture and amplification principle that remained poorly understood but demonstrably functional. Once this line appeared in the internal notes, the situation escalated and security personnel reportedly stepped in to restrict photography, data extraction, and device disassembly. The UN office overseeing emerging technologies insisted on preparing a controlled announcement rather than allowing leaks to spread uncontrolled speculation. When the official statement finally appeared, the world was stunned by its simplicity. It said, the RF power generator presented by Maxwell Chikambutso has passed initial operational verification under supervised conditions. Further evaluations are ongoing. Those nine words, has passed initial operational verification under supervised conditions, sent shockwaves across scientific institutions, governments, and corporations. Waves of commentators flooded social media arguing about what this meant for global electrification, energy independence, and political stability. Some claimed that this would disrupt billion-dollar industries overnight, while others argued that the UN statement was cautious and intentionally vague. But regardless of where one stood, something had changed. For the first time, Maxwell Chikambutso's technology wasn't being dismissed outright. It had received an acknowledgement powerful enough to shift public perception and ignite global debate. The first half of the report described experimental repeatability, listing data logs of output consistency and thermal stability. But then the second half featured language that analysts described as carefully diplomatic, saying the technology still required peer review, cross-institution validation and long-term reliability testing. This opened the door to a new wave of rumors, questions, and theories that created even more attention than the inspection itself. 
Some insiders claimed that the UN was intentionally downplaying the technology because revealing its full capabilities could disrupt geopolitics overnight. Others argued that the report was actually generous and that Maxwell still needed to demonstrate viability at scale. But then more whispered details began to surface, suggesting the UN team had seen things during testing that they could not fully explain. One rumor claimed that the generator's internal coils emitted a unique resonant pattern that did not correspond to any known RF architecture in standard engineering. Another rumor suggested that the device created a localized null zone in electromagnetic noise, something usually associated with classified military research. People close to Maxwell hinted that he had implemented a self-stabilizing algorithm that helped the generator regulate its internal resonance with near-organic precision. But critics pushed back, saying such features sounded exaggerated and that there must be a simpler engineering explanation. Then came the boldest rumor of all, that during one of the final stress tests, the UN team allegedly disconnected all auxiliary instruments, cut external monitoring lines, and isolated the generator in a Faraday enclosure, expecting it to shut down within minutes. Instead, the device continued running, although witnesses disagreed about how long it stayed active. Some insisted it kept running for nearly two hours. Others claimed it shut down after 30 minutes but restarted by itself when the enclosure was opened. This conflicting testimony fueled theories on both sides. Believers argued that the device tapped into ambient RF noise and converted it into structured energy using proprietary resonance loops. Skeptics countered that human error, miscalibration, or misinterpreted instrumentation might have created the illusion of self-sustained operation. Officially, the UN has neither confirmed nor denied these circulating stories. They simply stated that supplemental testing was planned, in a controlled multi-institution environment. But the ambiguity only amplified public fascination. As days passed, more rumors emerged painting different versions of what might actually be happening behind the scenes. Some people speculated that several governments were already negotiating confidential access to the technology. Others insisted that Maxwell was under pressure to license or surrender certain components to international authorities. A few more radical rumors claimed that intelligence agencies were studying the generator's architecture to determine if it could destabilize existing power grids. But then again, these rumors may be rooted in exaggeration, fear, or the human tendency to attach dramatic narratives to anything revolutionary. There were also rumors that the UN team was split internally, with one faction believing the technology represented a breakthrough while another insisted the results had not been replicated enough times to be conclusive. Some said the device may be operational only under specific environmental conditions that Maxwell had carefully engineered within the testing chamber. Others claimed it might not rely on RF alone but on an unknown hybrid resonance effect that Maxwell discovered accidentally. A few skeptics even argued the entire event was orchestrated for publicity and that the UN statement was more about acknowledging the potential humanitarian benefits than verifying the science. But if that were true, why would the UN conduct multi-phase inspections with specialized auditors and electromagnetic specialists? Another narrative suggested that Maxwell himself may be holding back crucial details because he fears the technology could be misused if fully replicated. Yet another rumor said that he might not fully understand the deeper physics behind his own generator and was working with intuitive engineering rather than conventional scientific modeling. This rumor gained traction because throughout his career Maxwell has often described his inventions as being revealed through inspiration rather than formula-driven experimentation. But the counterargument quickly followed. Inspiration alone cannot impress UN engineers. If the generator truly passed inspection, it must have demonstrated measurable, repeatable performance beyond the threshold of coincidence. Still, even with all the evidence, people remained divided. Some scientists said the UN might have validated operational behavior but not theoretical feasibility. Others warned that anomalies in early testing do not guarantee long-term reliability, scalability, or safety. There were also whispers that the UN had recommended a follow-up evaluation involving CERN specialists, which sparked even wilder theories about the underlying physics of the generator. Some interpreted this as proof that the device might interact with quantum-level energy fields or vacuum fluctuations. Skeptics mocked this idea, 
saying the rumor was likely built on misinterpreted notes or mistranslated technical comments. But whether accurate or not, such rumors continued to fuel global excitement and controversy. There was also speculation that the generator's success might not be as dramatic as the headlines suggested. Some believed the UN team might have classified operational to mean that the device simply functioned according to Maxwell's claims under limited conditions, not that it had demonstrated unlimited free power. Others took the opposite view, arguing that if the UN publicly declared it operational, then the private findings were probably far more impressive. This belief aligned with those who claimed to have seen draft notes indicating unconventional energy behavior, though none of these alleged notes were ever officially released. Rumors even emerged that the device might be using existing RF noise merely as a trigger rather than the primary energy source, meaning the real mechanism could be something entirely different. Some said it might rely on magnetic resonance tunneling. Others proposed that the generator interacted with atmospheric charge differentials invisible to standard equipment. A few more speculative voices said the device may simply be an extremely efficient energy recycler, operating more like a closed-loop engine than a free energy machine. Each theory had its own believers and critics. Each rumor pushed the story further into uncertainty. And every new detail, verified or not, amplified the mystery surrounding Maxwell's device. By this point, the world was completely split between two camps. One camp believed this was the dawn of a new age, a moment when humanity finally gained access to clean, decentralized power that could uplift millions. The other camp warned that extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof and that the UN statement was merely a preliminary acknowledgement, not a scientific breakthrough. But the truth may be somewhere in the middle. The technology may be revolutionary, or it may simply be an innovative energy device with limits not yet identified. It may represent a paradigm shift, or it may face challenges that prevent it from scaling. It may be fully functional, or it may still be a prototype far from commercial viability. It may be exactly what Maxwell claims, or it may be something else entirely. And that uncertainty, that lingering may be or may not be, is what fuels both hope and skepticism. Because sometimes the greatest breakthroughs emerge from ideas that were once dismissed and later proven true. And sometimes the boldest claims collapse under deeper scientific scrutiny. But today, one fact remains undeniable. Maxwell Chikumbutso's RF power generator has passed a UN inspection and been declared operational, even if no one fully understands what that means yet. And for now, the world watches, waits, debates, and imagines what could come next.